Hello and welcome to another episode here on the War of the Rebellion channel. Today we are going to start a new series where we are going to explore material I covered in my book Liberty and Slavery published by Alice U Press. In the series we are going to look at a number of individuals, migrants from Austria, Hungary, Poland, Germany and Ireland and how they experienced European revolutionary events, how they came to the United States and witnessed the war of the rebellion and in a few cases also what they did after the war of the rebellion. When Rudolf Schleiden arrived in North America, his initial duty was to negotiate a new postal agreement between the United States and the Hanseatic city of Bremen. The goal of this new treaty was to provide a subsidy for a new steamship line that was supposed to run between Bremen and New York. He was able to do that, but for the next decade his work again and again centered on that steamship line and the reliability of that service. But it's during his time in Washington that we get a major institution in the North German Lloyd created, or North Deutscher Lloyd, which eventually becomes part of what is today known as Hapag Lloyd. You may have seen containers of theirs around the country. Building on the success of his treaty negotiations, in 1857 he is sent to Mexico to also negotiate a new trade agreement between Bremen and Mexico. That treaty is negotiated and signed, but never ratified as a result of the turbulences in Mexico as part of the Guerra de Reform, or Reform War, between Juarez's forces and conservative Mexican forces in a conflict that eventually escalates into the French involvement and Maximiliano taking over the throne of Mexico. During this visit, Schleiden is actually able to see the grave of his father. We don't know anything about his feelings, his personal reactions, how, what he did. Um, unfortunately, his diary was very silent on that subject. With regard to the United States, Schleiden was sympathetic to the Free Soil Movement, even though in his diplomatic correspondence he maintained as much a neutrality as he could. He hated slavery, though, so, and his diary oftentimes mentions sad moments where, for example, the slave boy who brought Schleiden his dinner and food in his time in Washington was being sold off so that the woman owning him could go on a vacation. And Schleiden very much regretted that he was too poor to obtain and buy the child and give him his freedom. He also recorded incidents in New Orleans where he observed a slave auction and was taken aback by the prices that were attached to human beings. When South Carolina seceded, Schleiden was concerned about the events and especially after April 19 when the citizens of Baltimore fire on US soldiers passing through the city, Schleiden's 
desire to avoid bloodshed, his humanitarian side comes out and he decides to approach the Lincoln government about the possibility of negotiating a truce between the two sides to give Congress time to come together in July and potentially find a solution to this conflict. Unfortunately, as covered in a previous video that I will link here, Schleiden's negotiations with Alexander Stevens come to nothing and henceforth Schleiden is taking a side role within Washington politics. Nevertheless, whenever Secretary of State William Seward requires suggestions with regard to questions of international law, it is usually Schleiden and his British counterpart Lord Lyons whom he inquires with. Schleiden's role during the American Civil War is one of an observer, but translating his experiences from the Danish Revolution and Schleswig-Holstein Revolution in 48 illustrates how much he understood that the South was on a lost cause. Not to be confused with what Confederates eventually make of the lost cause, but a cause that had very little chance to win. And Schleiden understood this very well, considering he had been part too of such a failed secessionist uprising. If these brief episodes sparked your interest about the individuals covered, please consider not only subscribing and liking this channel, commenting on this episode, but also looking into purchasing my book, Liberty and Slavery, published by LSU Press.